ഹ <تصفيق> أو يرسل عليكم حاصبا ثم لا تجد لكم وكيلا أم أمنتم أن يعيدكم فيه تارة أخرى فيرسل عليكم قاصفا فيرسل عليكم قاصفا من الريح فيغرقكم بما كفرتم ثم لا تجد لكم علينا به تبيعا ولقد كرمنا بني آدم وحملناهم في البر والبحر ورزقناهم وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Inshallah we're starting from ayah number 66 today uh, of Surah Bani Israel and in the previous lesson we heard about the very famous encounter that took place between the shaytan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his disobedience when Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the malaika, the angels and shaitan himself to prostrate before Adam alayhi salam and he refused. And at that point he asked for time to be given to him so that he can mislead as many people as possible and lead them to the hellfire which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him every opportunity that was possible for, the, for him so that he can mislead the human being. and. warned us that we are uh, the enemies or he is our open enemy. So, so we need to understand that. Now in this selection of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us as humans and tells us that how he has given us so much status and how, how much honor he has given us in comparison to all of the rest of the creation. And as Uh, a token of our appreciation we should only worship that creator who gave us such a status and who gave us such an honor in this world so basically it starts off by telling us how he enabled us to go in the ocean and collect the uh, blessings of the ocean and to travel from place to place and then after that people they see the power of the ocean and yet they don't understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then finally it culminates in a beautiful verse which tells us about how the status of Adam alayhi salam and the progeny of Adam alayhi salam have been given such a great honor. So we start off by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us رَبُّكُمُ الَّذِي يُزْجِي لَكُمُ الْفُلْكِ Your Lord, your Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who makes izja. Izja, there are two meanings of this. One meaning is that He shepherds for you your sheep, your ships, okay? So just like a shepherd, it basically looks after the sheep and doesn't allow them to wander off so that the wild animals can eat it. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shepherds the ships while they're in the sea and basically takes care of them while they're traveling. So that's one meaning. And another meaning of yuzji, it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the travel on the oceans easy for you. Yuzji meaning making something easy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Your Lord made easy for you for the uh, boats in the ocean, meaning the uh, 
running of the boats on the ocean and in this day and age we have another form of travel obviously which is air travel which is even more wondrous and even more marvelous that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled us to do that and if you think about it 300 tons when a plane is taking off it's approximately 100 tons of weight which takes off in the air and flies in the air across the oceans at about 500 600 miles an hour and it takes you from place to place within a matter of hours so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled us to do that that's just an amazing uh, uh, ability that the human being has been given but in the day and age when the Quran was revealed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about something that the people may have been familiar with which was the travel on the ocean which they uh, were capable of doing at that time which was uh, traveling easily from place to place so who is the one who enabled them to, them to do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who is the one who enables us to fly across the oceans in these planes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ and why did he enable you to do that why did he enable you to travel across the oceans so that you can seek his fadl so that you can seek his blessings now this the word fadl has been mentioned again and again in the Quran in the context of wealth and many people they have this understanding or misunderstanding that wealth is evil wealth is inherently evil or wealth is inherently bad but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran he actually has used good words for wealth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word khair for wealth <coughs> he's used the word fadl for wealth so the reality is that that wealth which is earned in a halal way while not neglecting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that is khair and fadl otherwise if a person is neglecting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's earning from haram means then that is not fadl that is actually wabal that is a shar upon a person it is an evil thing which he will be questioned for on the day of judgment so لِتَبْتَغُوا min fadli. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled you to travel from place to place and one of the main things that you can do is seek his fadl, seek his wealth, seek money and seek sustenance all of these things fall under the meaning of fadl innahu kana bikum rahima indeed he has always been merciful upon you so the word is wording is kana bikum rahima kana it indicates consistency and con continuity that he has always been Rahim, merciful for you, that he's enabled you to do that. وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الضُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّا Now, think that you're traveling in the ocean and suddenly a storm comes and the storm is basically throwing the boat left and right and it becomes dark and the only thing that you can see is basically, uh, you know, your, your own hands. It's basically pitch black thunderstorm, lightning, rain coming down and the, th the boat is being thrown left and right. Or in this day and age you can say a plane that is going through very gentle air and then all of a sudden severe turbulence hits the plane. Okay, and it's rocking up and down and you basically you are saying what we say La ilaha illallah kalma, kalma parloji at that time, right? So everybody's afraid of, for their lives. So at that point the only thing that a person thinks about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy uh, that you know if I die in this situation that Allah you know please forgive me so the situation was the same with the mushrikeen of Mecca whenever they used to be in that kind of a very torrid and, and terrible situation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the same example of going through the ocean in four or five places in the Quran that a person is going through the ocean and he a storm hits him and then he doesn't call his as, uh, as statues and idols Allah and Al-Uzza and Manat he doesn't call any of them he only calls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mushrikeen of Mecca used to do that they only called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that difficult time and they used to forget about the rest of the idols so this is what Allah is saying that whenever harm t touches you in the ocean then uh, the ones that you call meaning the idols that you call they all become astray except him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's a story of Ikrama ibn uh, Abi Jahl 
he ran away from the Prophet ﷺ after he conquered Mecca. And he basically got onto a ship so that he could escape from the conquering Muslims. Uh, he had been an enemy of Islam throughout his life and now the Muslims were back. So he was afraid that they may take revenge. So he went and he tried to escape on a ship. What happened? The storm came and started rocking the boat left and right. And people started saying to each other, إِنَّهُ لَا يُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ إِلَّا أَن تَدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَحْدَ أَن تَدْعُوا اللَّهَ وَحْدَ It's not going to benefit you unless and until you only call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make dua only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ikrama thought to himself, the son of Abu Jahl, he, he thought to himself, وَاللَّهِ إِنْ كَانَ لَا يَنْفَعُ فِي الْبَحْرِ غَيْرَ غَيْرُهُ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَنْفَعُ فِي الْبَرِّ غَيْرُهُ If only he benefits us while we're in the ocean, then the same thing should apply while we're on the land. And then he thought to himself, Allahumma laka alayya ahd. He promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah, I make a promise to you. لَإِنْ أَخْرَجْتَنِي مِنْهُ لَأَذْهَبَنَّ فَلَأَضَعَنَّ يَدَيْ يَدِي أو يدي في يدي محمد فلا أجدنه رؤوفا رحيما. Oh Allah, if you save me from this storm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put my hands in the hands of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and most certainly I will find him gentle and merciful to me, meaning he's going to forgive me. And this is what he did. He went back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he became a Muslim, and he became a good Muslim at that. So this was an example of what used to happen. But But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you and He puts you onto the dry land, you turn back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You turn away. And this is actually the, uh, an example of the waves that we go through in our lives of difficulty, right? We, our lives go through waves uh, of hardship and ease. Hardship and ease. Hardship and ease. And when a person is in hardship, he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he basically promises, Oh Allah, I'm going to come to the masjid five times a day and I'm not going to make any sin anymore. I'm not going to make any disobedience to you anymore. But then when he comes out and he's in ease, then he forgets all about his promises. Okay, so this is basically the mentality of a human being. That when he's in that hardship, then he will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when he's in ease, then he forgets about his promises. So the mushrikeen also when they used to come to the land, they used to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they used to go back to their uh, idols. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ kafura. Indeed, the human being has always been uh, ungrateful. So again, the word kana is used for the human that continuously and all the time, the human being is ungrateful and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah asked the question to those people. أَفَأَمِنْتُمْ أَنْ يَخْسِفَ بِكُمْ جَانِبَ الْبَرِّ are you at ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot drown you on the edge of the land? He can suck you into the land too, right? That's possible. In dry land, he can pull you in like he did with Qarun. Even uh, there are instances of quicksand, right? Quicksand, basically soft sand that, bas uh, that pulls a person in and sucks a person into the ground. It, that can happen. So do you, are you at peace that uh, you will not be drowned in the land itself. That can also happen to you. Oh, yursina alaykum hasiba. Or he can send you hasib. Hasib means a rain which is mixed with, uh, which, which is mixed with rocks. Okay, so uh, we see examples of that sometimes in the form of hail. Okay, but the real meaning of hasib means rain which is mixed with rocks. Okay, so just imagine how terrible that would be. So Allah can send you on the land, he can send you this type of rain, just like he did with the people of Lut Then you would not find any helper for yourself. Okay, so it's not just the ocean, and it's not just in a plain that a punishment can come to you. It can come to you anywhere. Okay, you escape from the ocean this time, but next time you, uh, you go into the ocean, you don't think that can happen again? The next time you fly in a plane, you don't think you're going to hit turbulence? It's going to happen again. Or are you at ease that he's going to send you back in it another time? 
فَيُرْسِنَ عَلَيْكُمْ قَاسِفًا مِّنَ الْرِيحِ And he would send you uh, a very severe wind. Qasif, the word is, it has two meanings. It, either it means uh, a wind which breaks everything, or it means that kind of a, a, a cloud which, uh, which has thunder in it, that makes a sound. Okay, so he can send you this very severe wind that breaks everything. فَيُغْرِقَكُمْ بِمَا كَفَرْتُمْ And he will drown you because of your disobedience, because of your ungratefulness. ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُوا لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا بِهِ تَبِيعًا Then you're not going to find against us any tabi'ah. Tabi'ah is a helper, not just in any uh, simple form. Tabi'ah actually means the person who takes revenge uh, in, the, in the killing of his own relative. That's what the real meaning of tabi'ah is. Okay, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowns you in the ocean, who's going to pursue who? Or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a bolt of lightning to kill you, who are you going to pursue? Are you going to pursue anybody? What can you do about it? Are you going to sue anybody? You can't do that, okay? Because this was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, you're not going to find anyone to take revenge against me. Once that happens, once you get destroyed in such a way, once you see this kind of a punishment, then ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُوا لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا بِهِ تَبِيعًا Then you're not going to find anyone against us, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a tabi' one who follows or uh, basically uh, punishes uh, uh, us uh, for on your behalf. It's not going to happen. And then finally, the, the, the last ayah, which is a very, very loaded and very, very powerful ayah, which tells us in one summary the status of Adam alayhi salam and the children of Adam alayhi salam. Very beautiful ayah. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam." Indeed, we have given the children of Adam honor. We have given them dignity. We have given them status. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we've given them the power over the land and the sea. We've given them the power over land and the sea. وَرَزَقَنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ and we gave them the sustenance of all different things. You see in animals, okay, what kind of sustenance do they get? Only something that they can hunt, they can find, they can fly to. That's their sustenance. The children of Adam, their sustenance comes from all over the world to them. Thus, we're the only creation to whom the sustenance comes from across the oceans. Okay, the, the fruit that we eat, okay, the majority of it comes from other countries. Many of the grains that we have, it comes from other countries. The rice that we eat, it comes from other countries. The tayyibat, the sustenance, the pure things, the good things, they come from all over the place and this is exclusive for the children of Adam alayhi salam. وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Again, very powerful wording here. Indeed, we gave them a status over many of our creation, tafzila, a huge status. This in Arabic, in Arabic grammar is called maf'ul mutlaq. فَضَّلْنَاهُمْ tafzila. You bring the same verb again to denote emphasis. We gave them a huge status over a lot of our creation. It's mentioned in a hadith, Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala raised from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, that inna al-malaika qalat, the angels they said, Ya Rabbana, O oh our Lord, a'atayta bani Adam ad-dunya. You gave the children of Adam dunya, the world, ya'kuluna fiha wa yashrabun wa yalbasun. They eat and they drink and they wear whatever they like in the worldly life. Wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdik wa la na'kul wa la nashrab wa la nalhu. We uh, make your tasbih night and day. And we don't eat, we don't drink, we don't get to enjoy anything. Okay? فَكَمَا جَعَلْتَ لَهُمُ الدُّنْيَا فَجَعَلْ لَنَا الْآخِرَةِ Just like you made dunya for them, okay, at least make us something in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds back to them and says, لَا أَجْعَلُ صَالِحَ ذُرِّيَةِ مَنْ خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْءِ 
كمن قلت له كن فكان how can I make the that creation that I created with my own hands just like that creation to whom I said be and it became okay meaning Adam alayhi salam was created with the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by himself and as for the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just commanded them to be and they became so even in the creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there's a huge difference with my hand okay you know you have these uh, really fancy cars right all of them handcrafted and that pushes up the price from being just a regular car to being a car which is hundred and fifty thousand dollars okay the Bentleys and the uh, you know the Rolls Royces all of them handcrafted so Allah SWT is saying that I handcrafted Adam alayhi salam you guys you were the uh, what do you call the uh, conveyor belt you were on the belt you were mass produced I told you kun you became and you became into existence I hand created Adam alayhi salam there's no comparison between the angels and that which I created with my hands but the issue is that the human has to understand this status if he understands this status then he he can become higher than the angels if he understands that status if he doesn't understand that status then he will become worse than the animals he becomes like the angels even worse than the animals how can he be even greater than the angels because despite having all of the desires despite having all of the uh, lusts for this world he suppresses those lusts he suppresses those desires and he obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of his life the angels they don't have any lust they don't have any desire and they don't have any choice they have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they're making tasbih they're making ibadah it's not really a great big deal but for the human when he has these lusts and these desires and these things pulling him in every direction and he still obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that is a great big deal and that person because of that he can become even better better than the angels and more higher than the angels so this is what we need to be striving for and understanding the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us understanding the position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us we need to work and make sure that we don't disobey him in this world so that we can get that status that he's promised us also in the hereafter i pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq to understand and practice what has been said and heard